Well, hey guys, welcome back. It's been a while since you've seen my face, and that's because there was really no reason to put it on here with this small test table that we've got while we're looking for our forever house here in the new area. And speaking of that, we've only got about six more months to find it. So we will be starting to drop some of the wants off our list here in a few months if we don't find something soon. And we will get into a new place and get a dream layout started pretty quickly. So with that said, everything you've been seeing up to this point has been pre-recorded and now I'm back in it. Had some personal life developments that I wanted to pre-record a bunch of videos and then wasn't able to get back to videos as quickly as I wanted to. So we're back at it now and we're back at it with some of the greatest stuff out there including Atherne's recent release of the SDF 40-2s. This is Santa Fe and Maersk are the two we're going to be looking at today. Now these are SDP 40 F series locomotives so there are some other variants out there for Atherin at your brick and mortar hobby shops and online retailers. So let's see what you get in the box right now. Alright so let's go ahead and unbox Maersk. Maersk. Now this is an official licensed Amtrak product because I believe they now own Mer Marisk or something? I, I don't know. Um, inside you get a manual with 20, 18 pages of information including functions and this is a Tsunami 2 so you've got expanded really details on this. Functions are right there if you want to pause your screen and take a look. You also have CVs and such inside the manual. There's an exploded parts diagram. If you're missing any parts, then you can go coordinate the part with the piece and contact parts at atherin.com. Genesis warranty. Atherin news flyer. This talks about LED truck lights. And shows you how to change the CV values in order to prevent... Uh, the lights turning off if you're in a consist and there's more information on the one-year warranty So you do get one year warranty on this Check the little pouch on the side just to make sure nothing's in there. Sometimes you get a cool little surprise And here is the locomotive now we'll unbox this Slide out the plastic blister as they call it Off with the lid and out with the locomotive. First thing I can tell and we can definitely test is man it is very weighty. It has a lot of weight to it so that usually equates pulling power. Equates to pulling power so we'll see how well this pulls later and what it weighs exactly. So that's that out of the box. We will get the Santa Fe out of the box as well but I want to show you this one first and do the unboxing of the Santa Fe off camera. All right, here you will observe my atrocious felt job, but what it does is it really dulls down the glare that was coming from this metallic surface, so I hope it helps you in seeing the models. And, as Uncle Eddie would say, he's a real beaut, Clark. We have the Maersk version right here of the SDF 40-2, and we're going to start off with some details, and I will get zoomed in for you to the beautiful nose of this locomotive. And what you're going to notice is the handrails up front are plastic. You've got a McHenry plastic coupler, silver tipped end accessory hoses, and a snow plow there with grab irons and the window for the hoses, along with that silver tipped end brake line there. And I still feel like I'm not doing you guys justice, so we're going to get even more nitty gritty with the front. Here's a nose door right there in the front with a little molded in latch, separately applied grab irons, sand filler hatches on the nose. Now as we work our way up you'll see on the windshield the teardrop windshield with little metal windshield wipers for each in this case. LED lighting in between the number boards there and we'll see about the number boards as well but they look very nicely applied, realistic. And you get a lot of detail on the roof as well. 
On the roof you've got an antenna stand back here and another antenna stand and then some conduit, electrical conduit running down to I believe it would be the headlight, running the headlight and then off to various areas as you can see from that angle. Now what I'm going to do speaking of angles is we're going to turn this way give you a nice side profile here and let you look at the truck detail as well so there's nice truck detail as you can see all of that detail I think of speed recorders on there and then you can see the cab window has a mirror and there is a cab interior for the front part there a little hard to see in camera get a really good view of the side from that angle including the dustbin hatch right here there's lift rings which you may be able to pick up on I think if I focus anymore we may go past infinity focus so I'm just gonna go a little further back where you can see the fuel tank and the exhaust along with the dynamic brake fans and the radiator fans right behind them there's a horn mounted in between the radiator fans and the dynamic brake fans there you got Maersk or Maersk somebody's gonna kill me for the pronunciation of this along with the little star logo along the side you got nice compartment detail molded into the side as well and let's not forget about the little crew access handrails right here so both sides now as you work your way back towards the radiator fan grill you have some see-through going on there with some three-dimensional look to it you can see the fuel tank detail as well as I got a little ahead of myself because emergency shut off and sight glass for the fuel, fuel tank is right there as well so we get to the rear end of this you can see how it's laced with separately applied grab irons going all the way up crew access letter coupler cut lever etc on the back and then another sand filler hatch on the rear end and you may be able to get a better view of those little tiny lift rings there's one right here for example but you'll get a really good view from the side because that's how they are positioned so very fine details on this locomotive more of the same on the other side you can see a jacking pad down by the trucks and kind of more of the same detail that we talked about so I won't waste too much time on this side as well that gives you another view up front I'll zoom out just a little bit I can figure out everything's backwards everything's reversed on my camera right now so sorry for the technical difficulties a little bit there but that is your SDF 40-2 in this scheme now I'm going to show you Santa Fe alright 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 as Matthew McConaughey says we've got the Santa Fe version here now this is a little different and I'll tell you why the first thing that may stick out to you is there's some patch areas going on the nose but more importantly this is prime for grime now that's a series in Atherin's lineup that basically is geared towards the folks that weather their locomotives grime up their locomotives they really do a job whether it's graffiti or weathering but it has the paint already kind of flattened effect done dull coated whatever you want to call it so that it's ready to accept that weathering a little better sticks a little better and it pops a little better and I think it was a great addition to the lineup and the only thing I've really seen from a manufacturer uh, to do that to really make it available and um, make it ready for those folks that really like to grind things up now with that said let's go back to the details because there are some different details on this and for this I'm gonna set the other locomotive right next to it so I can point to you some of the details and, and explain how they're different in case your memory is not good like mine but there's a cab air conditioning unit on the Santa Fe version where you don't have that on the Maersk you've got uh, some differences in the nose as well there is a low mounted nose headlight versus where it was mounted in between the number of boards on the other locomotive there is a blank plate here for this version 
these two antenna stands are the same and some of the conduit is the same so that is as the other locomotive so not much difference is there you do see a little more weathering they do tend to put a little blackness in the grills which is nice because those always have some blackened effect on the real things but a lot of the roof detail is the same in between in both the units because Atherin will research the prototype and make the changes that are needed, but they're not going to just change stuff to change it. So this is how the Santa Fe appeared in real life, and that's what they are modeling in this case. Now, there are some slight differences even in the fuel tank area, like on the Santa Fe. There's safety markings for ladder access here. There's ladder on the other one, but they don't have the safety markings like Santa Fe does. And then you've got the FRA, it looks it appears like FRA mandated reflector area on here. So maybe this is post 2006. I could be really off my game here, but I think that is the case. There's definitely little yellow squares, which is indicative of an FRA uh, mandated reflector, side reflector for the locomotives because I think it was around 2006 that they had mandated that for all locomotives because people were running on the side of trains like dummies. So now we have the back, as you can see on the back, more of the same detail, but obviously some color differences there, but no difference really in the configuration of the actual models on the back. So just so I can remove this again, so you can see the other side, do my Vanna White piece here. It's more of the same detail on the side, and since you didn't, since you Santa Fe fans got robbed of a close-up view while I was doing comparisons, here's that close-up view for you. A beautiful detail. That roof is just decorated all heck between the air conditioning units and the Sinclair antennas and the stands. So that is all of the detail on these locomotives. And now let's go to some testing and operation. All right, we'll go ahead and apply track power so you can just hear what it sounds like when you turn your layout on. That's the um, abbreviated startup sequence. Now, first thing I want to talk about is F9, which turns us to half volume, which I think will allow me to be heard a little better. But I've got the manual out, and all I'm doing is going over the functions of this locomotive. So I will kind of move to the nose a little bit more and zoom in because. One of the first things we're talking about is lighting. So we'll go F0. Here you've got the headlight. One is bell. Two is horn. Three is short horn. Four is dynamic brakes, which you have to get moving in order to get. You can hear the whine of the dynamic brakes. F5 is a lighting effect. Which, speaking of which, when we're looking at lighting, I'll go ahead and kill some lights here. As you can see, there is the truck lighting we were talking about at the beginning. All that's LED. If you see a flicker, that's because the frame rate of the camera is out of sync with the frame rate of the LED. Every LED has a very fast, non-detectable to the eye frame rate. So I am seeing a steady light and trucks that are off the track, but you may be seeing a little bit of a flicker. 
All right, so that's lighting effect. You got the number boards. Same thing, you're gonna see flicker on that most likely. Those are beautifully lit number boards. Nice even application behind the board. There's no shine through anywhere. It looks great. F7 is dimmer. Just dims your headlight there. F8 is mute. F9 was that half volume. F10 is straight to 8 or standard valve. Here the sander valve in that case. Very subtle. 11 is brake set release. If you set the brakes, you can turn the RPMs up and it won't move until you release them. F12 brake select. 13 is couple and uncouple. Do that one real quick. F14 is half speed and momentum override. F15 handbrake. F16 is HEP mode on and off, F17 fuel loading sequence, 18 general service sequence. You got a steam generator all aboard. You have to do that one, the kid in us anyway. You got manual engine notching up and down. So I will give you a little bit of the engine notching up and down so you can hear the prime mover really get going. that little sequence now if emergency stop is hit you'll also hear an air dump and in some cases there's a red emergency light I did not see one on here it's hard to tell you see that lower light is illuminated so that is the MERSC. We're going to take a look at Santa Fe real quick and do some of the tests on that one so you can see that in action. All right, first thing we're going to do is weight. I've kind of wanted to know what this weighs because it's so darn heavy. One pound, 10.8 ounces. You may not see that that well because of the 
screen, but that's what it says. 26.8, 26.9 ounces. It's fluctuating a little bit. 760, 762 grams. So it's over a pound. It's almost two pounds. It's a pound and almost 11 ounces there. So that's why it seems so heavy, because it is. Now let's see if that equates to pulling power. Right now when I do my pulling power tests, I do have the locomotive off so you can hear motor noise, but don't get that confused with the grind that you hear from the track, which just you'll be able to tell. So we're going to get this moving here. See, that's all grind from the track. Okay, we're showing 4.5 ounces, which is about, 4.5 ounces is about 67 cars. That's pretty good for a diesel locomotive and on the high end. Now what I can do, see that's motor noise, very, very quiet. So motor noise is really good, pulling power is really good. We'll go ahead and check NMRA compliance and see what the AccuTrack 2 speedometer has to say about slow speed. All right, so NMRA compliance. You have wheel gauges. See if they're in, in NMRA compliance. So far, so good. I don't know if I'm not really showing up on the screen here. <laughs> this is a very difficult, very tight shot here. And then a lot of metal causing some reflection. But that is all in gauge there. Now we can switch back and forth to check testing. So now we can take a look at coupler height testing on this other locomotive. All right, holding the camera here as I do this. So you have to be your own judge. It looks like it's a little high on that end. Notice we're getting a bit of a slope too from that so we might recheck this from a different area which is right here still a little high looks like we're riding a little higher than KD would like which is also the NMRA standard so slightly high about a eighth of a couple or high not terribly off all right we're gonna turn on the accu track Gonna move this at one speed step, and this will tell us how fast it's going to scale. You can also see the smoothness of the drive at one speed step without any break in for your own judgment. That's why it's so far back from the AccuTrack. I wanted you to see that in motion. So here it's entering the speedometer. And it's 1.3 miles per hour scale. Looks pretty good. Now since we have it in motion, I'll go ahead and slide it back a little bit. So I know it's a party foul in some places. But what I want to show you is speed steps a little higher because one, going to be lurchy especially with no break-in in a lot of cases I've seen that in most of the locomotives we test but there's two and it's all smoothed out and here's three I went up to four for a second so that little jerkiness was my fault four and five and we're going to reverse And go one and reverse. Two, everything seems to smooth out. Three, four, and five. And then we just tested mute with the F8. So, with that said, that's going to wrap up our review of the Athern SDP40Fs 
series locomotives. These were SDF 40-2s. And I just realized that my chair was hitting <laughs> a little bit. But what you've got here is two great locomotives, good pulling power, good sounds, road name, road specific detail, prime for grime with the Santa Fe version. Now the Bur the Merce, the only thing I really didn't talk about is really a BNSF unit, so that's something else for you BNSF fans to maybe look into. But great pair of locomotives, they sound good, they have really good weight at almost a pound and 11 ounces I think it was. It's uh, scale miles per hour, 1.3, and after speed step one and speed step two and on. You've got a smooth drive with that Genesis drive, so you can't really ask for much more. LED lighting, Tsunami 2 features. Be sure to check out my series on Tsunami 2 that's been posted on my YouTube channel for some time now because there's a lot of things buried in Tsunami 2 you don't know about either. With that said, I'm not going to leave you with a run-by because there's no layout. I am layoutless, you know, so hopefully that will end within six months. That's my goal. At least we'll be to be under contract with a house in six months. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.